Hey, what's up guys? It's John. In this video, I'm going to share with you five ways that you can find off-market deals. First way I would say is uh, it's super popular right now is gonna be cold calling. Picking up the phone and, um, and find, you know, you'll find out who the owner of the property is. And from there, uh, you can do something that's called skip tracing. Uh, skip tracing is how you can find out, um, find, you can find their phone number, you can find out where they currently live. That's very easy to do if you go to your, uh, you go to your city or county website, you'll often see their um, the property address as well as their mailing address. That mailing address um, most likely is the property where they actually live. And, uh, and there are different services out there to where you can find the number and then you just give them a call. Let them know you're interested in their property. Find out if they have any interest in selling. There's tons of scripts out there. Uh, tons of scripts out there on the web. Tons of videos um, with scripts on cold calling, as well as if you check out your local RIAs, um, you'll be able to network there and find out whether someone is what's working when uh, when calling potential sellers. Number two is going to be ringless voicemail, or as you may hear it referred to as RBM. And this is actually how I bought my last. Uh, not, not the last property, but the property before the last property, um, was a ringless voicemail. And, and not just a ringless voicemail, but those who didn't call back from the ringless voicemail, did not revert back to cold calling. And I give them a call, hey, <laughs> left your voicemail, um, what's going on? And um, I talked to him and he wanted to sell. And that one I actually bought and took down myself. And uh, we, we sold that one on the lease option. So if you ever received a, your, your phone would do a quick ring and then it would show that, that you have a voicemail. You just got hit with an RBM and I've noticed it a lot. Um, it's kind of annoying on the receiving end, uh, which I can imagine it's annoying on their end as well, but it's very, very effective. You can hit a lot of people at one time and you can have all of those calls. You can have them, if you have some type of a call management system, you can have them go to a number that's uh, strictly a voicemail, or if you can have it come to you, you can have it go to your VA or your team members. It's a lot of ways that you can handle the, the influx of calls, but be prepared when you send out hundreds of calls, um, hundreds of voicemails that one time your phone is about to blow up and even though I say your phone is about to blow up not all of them want to sell neither some of them are just calling the number back that they just saw that they had a missed call from so you still have to be prepared to uh, to take over the conversation put your sales hat on or really just be personable um, just just let them know you're your local investor you're looking to buy you know why you reached out to them about their property, and then you can take it from there. But RBM is probably one of my favorites. Number three is going to be direct mail. You hear a lot of people saying that direct mail is dead, but um, I don't think it's dead. I still hear a, a lot of people saying that it works. That's how they're still getting their deals. But if you've ever received one of those, we'll pay cash for your property, um, postcard or it's a yellow letter, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about direct mail. Again, the process would be um, you can pull a list, you can pull a list to mail to, or else if you've been driving for dollars, you can, um, you, you know, you'll have your own list and then you can find out. Remember, we have the subject property address and then we have the mailing address. That mailing address is where you want to send that letter to, because most likely the subject property, the mail is just getting backed up there. Um, so you want to send it to that mailing address because you have a higher chance of actually reaching the owner of that property. Number four is going to be building relationships with agents and brokers. Uh, once you have relationships built and they are confident that you can close, um, they can start sending you properties before they even put them on to the multiple listing service, um, also referred to as an MLS. And that's known as a pocket listing. So that's going to come from, um, from, from networking. When you're really, everyone should know what you do, including real estate agents. And when you go out to different real estate meetings, uh, network, let them know that you're looking to buy. This is my criteria. Um, if you have the ability to close, let them know that. that that really puts them at ease if they know that they're working with someone that can close. And it could be you or it's your end buyer. So I would have to say um, networking with, with agents and, and brokers, that's a really good one. Number five, which I already hinted at it, is going to be driving for dollars. Or you may hear someone refer to it as farming. Or you may hear someone refer to it as cruising for cash. 
But um, long story short, is getting your car and going out there and looking for um, for potential properties that you can put under contract or that you can buy. Stay tuned for my next video that will uh, show you things that you can look for. That that you the things that you can look for that will let you know that this is a potential distressed seller and that this would be a good a good lead for you to go after. But as of now, it's just on the list, it's driving for dollars. So definitely um, definitely use that if you're looking to get off-market deals. And since you stayed to the end, my bonus one, which everyone already knows about, but it works, is the old bandit sign. Cor corrugated plastic here. You'll, you'll often see these out on the road. I know that you've seen these out on the road. And they'll say, we buy houses cash. Then they'll, they'll have a number there. That, that's another way that you can find off-market deal. Somebody will drive by. Oftentimes, someone who's calling and band sign it is also really motivated. So uh, it's good to take those calls. If you miss it, get back on the phone with them ASAP because if they've called a band sign, they're not only calling your band sign, but they're, they're, they're comfortable calling signs, so they're going to call other signs as well. So if you have these calls going straight to a voicemail, make sure you call them back as soon as it comes in because they're, they're on the move. Um, so yeah, that was my bonus one, but which we all should know about. So that was uh, six ways that you can find off-market deals. Hopefully you're out there um, locking up properties and, and finding deals. If you haven't implemented um, any of those six, definitely implement them. If you have some that's not on the list that I named, please leave them down in the comments. This way I can add more to my arsenal. But for those who stuck around to the end, thank you so much for watching my video. I'm John. Um, please subscribe. I have a video coming to you of our real estate estate business lifestyle um, online content creation once every week so again thank you all so much you're, you're very much appreciated and i'll see you on the next video